Okay, in this week's recap, impressive hiring, healthy service and factory sectors, the Fed's view of the present and near future, and gains for equities. Emotion has no place in your investments, so how do you know what news actually matters? Hi, I'm Eric, and in the next few minutes, we're gonna forget the headlines and focus on the facts. Here's what really happened last week. All right, strong jobs and manufacturing data helped to give the major indices a lift last week. In three and a half trading days, the NASDAQ composite advanced 2.37% to 76.88, gaining 1.5%. The S&P 500 closed at 27.59 on Friday, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.76% on the week to 24. 456. Additionally, the Russell 2000 small cap index improved 3.1% across the week to 1694. Employers hired 213,000 more workers than they laid off in June, according to the Department of Labor. Analysts surveyed by Bloomberg had forecast a gain of 195,000. In the second quarter, net monthly job growth averaged 200 and 11,000. As the labor force participation rate increased 0.2% last month, so did the headline jobless rate. It also rose to 0.2% up to 4%, moving north for the first time in almost a year. The U6 rate, which includes underemployed Americans, also increased 0.2% to 7.8%. Annualized wage growth remained at 2.7%. The Institute for Supply Management's Twin Purchasing Manager Indices came in at or near 60 last month. ISN's manufacturing gauge rose to 60.2 from the previous reading of 58.7. Its service sector index increased a half of a percent to 59.1. MarketWatch projected both PMIs at 58.3 for June. Minutes from the Federal Open Market Committee's June policy meeting were released Thursday and noted that the economy's expansion is progressing smoothly and at a solid rate. Policymakers also have some downside risks on their minds, noting the possible adverse effects of tariffs and some other proposed trade restrictions and political and economic developments in Europe. Some FOMC members were concerned that rapid growth could breed heightened inflationary pressures and financial imbalances that might eventually provoke a significant economic downturn. All right, looking ahead at this week, nothing major is slated for today, Monday, or tomorrow, Tuesday. The June producer price index appears on Wednesday. Investors will pay attention to the June consumer price index and the latest initial employment claims figures on Thursday. Friday, a new earnings session b begins, and in addition, the University of Michigan offers its initial July Consumer Sentiment Index. Hey, this is Eric again. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. If you'd prefer to read the transcript each week, you can subscribe to that at www.erichagen.pro. Also, if you'd like to get financially organized, head on over to nocostfinancialdashboard.com and take control of your financial future. Lastly, if you want to find out if you're invested right, visit getinvestedright.com right now. Thank you again for your time today. I'll look for you next week.